Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest and today we're going to look at how I have this UPS truck turned into a mobile workshop for mobile mechanics. So pretty much the last thing I have to do on the outside is I'm, I'm in the process of removing these uh, old sticker residue, decal residue uh, with some rubber wheels. Working pretty well but taking a while. I'm going to have a wrap done for it soon. So I'll have my company info on the outside wrapped. But for right now, we've still got that old sticker residue from the post office. And we'll go right into this truck and, and do a pretty extensive tour of uh, pretty much everything I've got going on in here. So uh, you come in first step right here. I've got just a small fire hydrant right next to it. Because one time I think I had a bad dream about a car catching on fire that I was working on. And I realized I didn't have a fire hydrant. So I went ahead and at least got a small one. Uh, this is a connector for a uh, charger for my batteries. There's a parasitic draw on these batteries, so if I leave it sitting for a few weeks, they'll die. But I drive it pretty much every day, so I'm not really worried about it. But every now and then I'll plug this in at night, and I've got it wired straight into the battery here. So I've got the, you know, the dual battery set up with the cables tying those together. These other cables you see here running up through here. Those go up and over this wall here where there's a space through the wall and it goes up to a 1500 watt inverter right here so I can run, you know, battery chargers, even a small fridge if I wanted to out of here. Uh, so that's a pretty good setup there. I've just got that big thick gauge wire on. I actually made it out of some jumper cables going there. That other wire you see going there is this wire coming here. It that's a, That single wire right there has two smaller wires in it. So to extend those smaller wires, I just, you know, spliced in this longer wire so that's why there's one there it goes to two up there and it comes over here to the underglow kit so we've got some underglow on the truck you might see in a different video i'll maybe link it in the top right here um, the underglow would randomly I, I wired it into the fuse box here just on the normal power and ground but as soon as you plug the underglow kit in it'll turn on so i guess there's blips in the power every now and then so i'd come out in the morning and the underglow would be on it had kicked on sometime during the night so i, I wired this cutoff switch into it so I can completely shut the power off to the kit or I can turn it on to run that underglow and I've got a remote there for it with the different colors and features so pretty cool that's an advertising aspect of the truck just to get more people's attention to it obviously once I have it wrapped I'll be using it uh, so far I've just turned it on a few times because it looks cool but once I have it wrapped I'll be turning it on at night to draw attention to the truck and uh, get some people interested in the truck so uh real quick up here not to bore you this is just a little there's no ac so this is a little vent system i can open the vents and have at least some breeze come down on me in the summer i drive around with the windows open or the doors open but sometimes i have stuff sitting up here i don't want to fly out uh two different phone chargers my personal phone's an iphone my business phone charges off this same one as the gopro batteries i keep those up here because the gopro batteries don't last super long as you may know if you've had a gopro different things here it does have heat so there's the heater core right there um i can you know turn it on outside air inside air defrost or you know blow it out the vents here um you know max or high fan the other fan i have for the summer is right here let me turn that on real quick for you and show you what it's like it's not much again there's no ac so this is kind of all you get and that's high that's as high as it goes so just enough to give you a little breeze but once you get driving down the road it doesn't do much the nicest thing i'd have to say is this vent here that opens and closes so i just kick it open when i'm driving i'm getting a little warm i'll just kick it open and it actually opens this vent so it, it pulls air in it doesn't just like open a window that doesn't really pull anything in it opens that flap so it pushes air up through that and it'll blow all down my legs and up my torso and that's probably the best thing for keeping me cool in the summer I uh, try and just leave the windows open or the doors open as much as possible, especially this door to keep the back nice and cool. If not, it turns into a little oven back there. So most of the time I'll drive around with this door open, but uh, it closes and locks up. So at night I'll lock it up and then you need that eight pin key. It's like an office key to get in there. So it's not easy to pick. Not that it's impossible, but uh, anyways, got this GoPro mount for the videos when we're driving out front. You got that time lapse looking through the window got a passenger seat if somebody wants to come along but not only do that do i have this passenger seat but right now i have these passenger seats as well so i have run some d-rings through the floor with some bolts and strapped this old bench seat from a truck back here 
and put some more ratchet straps on it you could use it as a seat belt i may get some old seat belts like airplane seat belts or something you can put in there to make it legit that way if i get pulled over then there's no no issue so that's the look at the front passenger area and then we'll take a good look here at the back and go through everything that's back here All right, I may do a shorter tour as well in a different video of just how I organize my tools. It's been a few minutes just talking about the front up there, so I understand if that's boring to you. Anyways, we may do a shorter video of just these tools, but so I've got two toolboxes. Originally, I had a red box that fit in the back of my pickup truck that was sticking out to here, but it stuck halfway out the door. So uh, I eventually got rid of that. It just didn't make sense. I thought this may be sufficient, but once I was done organizing this, I had this whole shelf full of just random tools that didn't have a place. So I went ahead and picked up another toolbox, which is right here. Now we'll start up in this corner. This toolbox here is kind of where I stick stuff that I'm gonna be using immediately. It doesn't tend to slide around much. I've got these 90 degree aluminum angle brackets bolted to the floor to keep this toolbox from sliding around. Never had an issue with it, but that red box that I mentioned I used to have sitting down here used to slide around a bit so I figured I would better be safe than sorry and put some angle brackets in the ground and uh, see if I can keep this toolbox sitting still and so far like I said I never had any issues before but definitely don't have anything now in the top drawer of this toolbox is where I keep all my wrenches and a few extensions I used to have a lot more but uh, I was so disorganized a few months ago I've lost a lot of tools and uh, this seems to be one of the things I lost the most among a few random sockets and some magnets, which uh, I'm pretty bummed about. But, uh, you know, you got your uh, belt tensioner tool, my random uh, wrenches. My very favorite wrench of all is this AutoZone one. They don't make anymore because AutoZone changed the brand of people that make their tools. But it's just a swivel head ratchet. You can get them. Pretty much everybody makes a style similar to this. So once this one bites the dust and I can't get a new one, then, you know, I'll find one somewhere else. But, uh got the same one here in a quarter inch i i almost always use three eighths for everything uh, i know a lot of people use quarter for working on vehicles i like three eighths because it tends to be when i'm working with a quarter there's always something that i just can't get with a quarter and uh i just need something a little bit longer and then i have to go grab a three eighths so i usually just you know take it careful with the three eighths and just stick to a three eighths most of the time but you know extendable half inch there's a random half inch i don't know why i have that you know some breaker bars this isn't a breaker bar this is a ratchet same same style as this and uh yeah that's a look at that never used this but i thought it was cool so i got it it's probably how half my tools are then we go down to the next drawer i just emptied out but i'm gonna put my vacuum pump in here i have it up here because uh i've got to take it in to get warrantied because it broke and this is where i put all my parts like today i'm going to be doing spark plugs and wires on a truck so um, this is a core I've got to take back to the store, a toolkit that's got to be warrantied. There's a core as well. So just things that are going to be used immediately. Parts mostly go up there. And I've got like a face mask because of COVID-19 is going on right now. So I'm trying to stay safe. Here's a speaker. I'm not the biggest type listening to music, but when I work with some friends or uh, have somebody work for me, they usually like to have music on. So uh, there's there was that vacuum drawer, but it's not in there. Here's a drawer of screwdrivers that aren't organized in my pickle forks. Uh, I may organize this, but I usually use the same three or four screwdrivers. Uh, this little pry bar is pretty handy when I'm doing brakes. I'll usually grab that. And uh, this is the other thing I use a lot is that clip remover for those clips. Uh, pretty much everything in here I use, so nothing nothing really redundant here. This little scraper here is real nice because this end is sharpened and uh, it removes gasket material quite well. Here's my plier drawer. Uh, here's these random pliers that I may end up getting rid of because I don't use them. I'll usually just drain a cooling system. These, uh, they work well enough, but if you're going to be working on something for 10 minutes, it's going to all drip out anyways. They just don't seem to quite do the job, uh, by cutting off that fluid, you know, perfectly. So, but these are, you know, hose clamp pliers, but again, they take up a lot of room and I don't use them. Uh, here's my other pliers, my favorite set of pliers. I don't even know what they're called wire strippers i like these long handle pliers uh here's a set of crescent pliers that are 
long reach you know they open with a little bit of movement in the handle real well vice grips whatnot all my vice grips are pretty much worn out so i'm looking for a new pair now i was looking at the milwaukee's but uh i may end up going with duralast since I, I go to autozone multiple times a day most of my tools are autozone tools now because i'm there so often if anything breaks i get it warranted that same exact day so um i don't know what that is might have come out of this i'm thinking i've got to figure that out i've never seen that before but again i've never even used these chain lock pliers but whatever here's retrieving tools actually this is a really nice tool for doing getting hose clamps way down low on a radiator you can pull this handle here and it locks in a place up here to hold the, that close so i use that quite a bit these retrieving tools you know if i'm lucky i don't have to use them that often but you know how it goes uh, here's my diagnosing drawer. I might put a few more things in here, an extra remote for those underglow lights. But I've got my, you know, code reader here. Can pull up live data. A good uh, multimeter. You know, just some random things. Little inspection uh, mirrors there. A thermometer. Uh, my test probe. Spark tester. This measures the thickness of brake pads. So some stuff in here I don't use that often. This actually if it has batteries, test your brake fluid. So it'll tell you if your brake fluid needs to be flushed or replaced. Um, so I'll use those, you know, if I'm trying to drum up business and be real thorough or suggest, you know, things for people to fix on their car. But I haven't been using them that much lately. Here's the sockets I use mostly. Here's the there's that quarter inch and three eighths. Looks like that one got a little rusty. But uh, mostly I'll just grab this 3 8 and I'll do everything with this 3 8 I've got, uh, I'll, I almost always use 6 point because I never strip anything out because I always use 6 point. I say that and I'll strip something out. It's not impossible that I strip something out, but I'm usually careful enough that I don't strip stuff out and I always try and stick to 6 point. Uh, you may disagree with that, but I just like to be careful. So I've got my deeps here. Deep 6 points were hard to find. AutoZone actually had them. And then uh, here's my everything else, pretty much Craftsman. I've got these real shallow sockets I like from AutoZone as well. These are from AutoZone as well, and they uh, they grip rounded out nut, uh, bolts real well. But, you know, nothing like an extractor, which I've got up here, my extractors and my pass-through sockets. And I've got my pass-through wrenches up here somewhere. Where are they at? Okay, maybe I don't have them up here. Oh, yeah, they're there. Okay. And I've got these labelers, but I, I don't really need to label my sockets. I kind of can tell what they are by looking at them, or at least grab the one right next to it, and then I know which one it is next. So no big deal on those. Uh, down here I've got, I kind of set up this little battery station. I just used some uh, terminals today, so I'm going to stock up on a few more terminals. Um, but just stuff to take care of batteries. Up Out here I've been having a lot of issues with people and batteries, so I figured I'd set up a little area or have at least everything that I need to work on somebody's battery. And uh, this has worked out well because I've had a few calls already where somebody's like, hey, can you come work on my battery? And I've been able to go up and fix it without having to go there and diagnose it and then go grab parts at the store. So that one was cheap and simple to have a complete kit ready. So I just went ahead and threw that together. The other complete kits I want to get that I don't have are, are wires, different colors and gauges, and different size bolts and nuts, uh, kind of an assortment. I have this bag over here of random old bolts and nuts, like everybody might have a bucket or something, but you know, it always tends to have pretty much everything except the one you're looking for. So here's a junk drawer, uh, random drill bolts and stuff. I, I don't use that often. I say that, but I used them today and yesterday, and I've been using them a lot lately, but as for right now, they're just chilling down here with some other things like, you know, thread restores and stuff that don't get used that often. But, you know, I, when I need them, I'm glad I have them. So that's that for this drawer. Uh, the one thing that you must, must do in a mobile rig is lock up your tools, your toolbox when you're driving. If you go around a corner and all these drawers open, this box will fall over. So uh, I'm very meticulous about checking my drawers, making sure everything's locked before I take off driving. And that being said, I only go through turns super, super slow through corners. So I'm very careful about going real slow through corners and that keeps stuff from moving around quite a bit. So I've got this tool here I'll use when I'm working back here on, you know, writing in a notebook or on the computer back here. If I'm, you know, doing work, this tool is nice to sit on. But now I've got this bench seat, so I'll sit here a lot too. Uh, I've got this shelf I just cleared out. I've got these non-slip mats up here so I can stick stuff up there and not worry about them sliding down and crashing into stuff when I'm driving. Uh, I've got these baskets here. This one's just got some bags in it and uh, 
you know, I may get rid of this. They're just bags I haven't brought myself to throw away yet. And this is this is stuff that I use quite a lot, wire ties. I've got my shrink connectors with solder in them. That's real good for a mobile rig because you don't have to have a soldering iron and different stuff. These will shrink right down on there with a hermetic seal. That little colorful PCC won't let moisture in and then it's got that solder ring in the middle that'll melt down and solder those wires together. You know, I've got hose clamps, your vacuum hoses, uh, not everything, but everything I've needed thus far, you know, a little wire electrical connector, shrink wrap there for wires. Uh, one of the most useful things is those automotive clips. I'm real careful taking them out so I don't break too many, but when I do, it's nice to have, you know, an extra one so I can put somebody's car back together. Self-tapping screws, E-clamps, uh, copper washers for banjo bolts and uh, drain plugs on your oil pan and stuff like that. So just a random assortment of things that I use quite a bit that uh, are tend to be in these little cases that I don't want just sliding around everywhere. So coming back over to this corner, that does it for this row. We'll get up here in a second. Uh, coming back to this corner, I've got my drain pans. This one I use for coolant only. So when I'm draining a radiator, I can recycle the fluid. I don't have any oil in there. This one I use for oil only. Uh, that's pretty full right now. I've got to drain that. When I do have to drain my oil, I put it all in this five gallon drum, which should be empty. And that way I can, I can fill this thing up, you know, two times or have one of these and one of those, which is equivalent to three of these at a time. And I don't have to go into the part store to recycle my oil every other day i can go about a week and a half or two weeks depending i try not to do too many oil changes um there's not too much of a market in that for me but I'll, I'll do them whenever somebody asks to do them you know in a job so moving along we've got you know just random drain pans this one i can use for oil as well i've got these ramps which i hardly ever use because i'll just jack the vehicle up i'm using this mostly well, i'm not using it for storage but i've got some stuff stored in there like ratchet straps and some uh you know bungee cords to strap stuff down here's my bag of bolts here's that seat if we come up here here's this stuff that doesn't really need to get dirty so i've got pens and paper my business cards and my logo bumper stickers i can put on people's car i'll give them a discount if they put their bumper sticker on their my bumper sticker on their car um yeah just some random stuff that i try and keep clean receipts that i can write up and stuff going straight up from there i've got these baskets full of fluids um, i'm gonna organize them i've just kind of got everything thrown in there from when i organized the truck recently but you know brake cleaner starting fluid carb cleaner electric parts cleaner pretty much any of the fluids you get in a can they're all thrown up here wd-40 uh pb blaster is my favorite i know people like croil and uh i believe it's probably a little better but I I've always just been a fan of PB Blaster. It's worked well enough. My theory is if you ever get to the point where Croil is working better than PB Blaster, then you're in some serious stuff that you need to be careful with anyway. So PB Blaster works just fine. I've got my hammer stuck in here, you know, rubber mallet, brass hammer back there, my three pound hammer, which comes in handy quite a bit. And this ball peen, which I hardly ever use. I don't know why it's on the outside. Well, I used it to bend that door down earlier because it was curled up on the edge a little bit. Up here, I've got my oils, my oil sand, that oil absorbent right there. Here's a big old bucket of oil I used for this truck. It was the best deal for this diesel. So, uh, yeah, got a five-gallon bucket of that. Got some waters up here because uh, everybody always offers me water, and uh, at least I can tell them I have waters. So I don't like to accept water from people, especially during COVID-19 and risk getting sick. So uh, I've got my jugs of antifreeze back here. Most of them are full. Some of them are empty that I'm going to get. Because sometimes when I have no buckets, I'll get only 50-50. Now that I've got empty buckets, I'll get full strength and I'll mix them myself with some water. Uh, this bucket's full of automatic transmission fluid, bottles that are half empty, uh, and I don't want them to spill out. So I've got them in this bucket with, some, with a pump and some hoses because I'll use those on manual transmissions and stuff when you got to have that hose to fill it up in the fill bolt in the fill hole so um soap here i'm gonna clean the truck so i've got some soap this is where i keep my big old breaker bar and pry bar and my big long screwdriver which i use as a stethoscope up here because they don't fit in any of the drawers um more automatic transmission fluid i come along which i don't use in this truck but i don't have anywhere else to put it right now in a hatchet for some reason same deal with that one not that i need it it's just up there um, we'll go up here first. So I kind of keep a stock pile of stuff I use quite a bit of these hand cleaning wipes, um, especially in a mobile rig are a must because you know, you don't have a sink in your shop. So uh, these do real well at cleaning up your hands, but as well, I like to keep my hands clean. I, I use a lot of gloves. So I've got a couple boxes, old gloves up here. 
and I've got bags of gloves and these gloves, you know, that I try and reuse, but with the COVID going on, I try and let them sit around for four or five days. So all the germs die off them before I use them again or put them up to my mouth to blow them inside out. I've got uh, shop towels up here, keep some on in stock. And these are buckets of wipes as well. So different kinds, these ones I use the most, they're the most affordable. These are Gojo and these scrubs are really good at removing real hard grease because they've got some abrasive stuff in them, but they're a little more expensive. So I just use those if I have to. Uh, I've got my three ton puller back there, which I use rarely um i want to get a universal puller for harmonic balancers and then i can barely see myself using that at all um but sometimes i'll use it to push axles in when i'm working on a wheel bearing or something like that uh i've got my tool kits here here's a five pound side hammer this is a lifesaver on all wheel drive or front wheel drive axles um that fork goes right up behind that axle and pulls it out rather than using pry bars and spending wasting hours of your life trying to get that out that works well this is a compression test kit, locking lug nut master key set. This is a brake caliper compressor whenever it has that screw type caliper. This is a fuel injection pump tester. This is a lifesaver as well, especially in a mobile rig. I don't have to pull this huge truck up next to somebody if their battery's dead. And a lot of times I'll stop on the side of the road to see people who are jumping their cars and they can't, you know, if I see someone jump in their car, most of the time they're having troubles with it because they're still there doing it. And this will start, I mean, this 6.5 liter diesel in my truck has no issue starting with this. So this is real good to get, you know, drum up business. I don't charge anybody anything to pull over and toss them this and let them jump their car, but I'll always hand them a business card and it's drummed up quite a bit of business. When you strip out your oil plug, in the bottom of your pan rather than replace the pan you can tap them that's what this set is here's a block test to test for blown head gaskets uh that's a fuel pump tester as well one of these i don't use because it's the it's just not a usable kind it's like a vacuum tester as well so um this is a pulley puller for power steering pumps works real well this might be piston ring compressors that i never even used and i've rebuilt a couple of engines but i've still never really used this so i don't know i may get rid of it uh some impact sockets here that didn't fit in my toolbox. This is what's this? Let's find out. So I'll probably remember what it is. Oh, this is an oil pressure test kit. I had some oil pressure problems in this truck, so I bought this manual gauge just to double check and verify everything that it wasn't an issue with the, you know, my wiring. So uh, these are axle nut removers, battery tester, small slide hammer that I never use. Might get rid of that too. Uh, you know, I think this is a hammer kit for like body panels. Oh, this is an AC manifold gauge. And this is a body panel hammer, which I don't do body work. I don't know why I have that. Here's the case for that vacuum pump. Up here, I've got my inspection camera. And then I've got my timing light there and a couple of gloves that I use. Um, you know, in the winter or whatever, gloves that aren't, that are reusable. This is my, one of my favorite tools here is a caliper compressor for piston style calipers. Uh, you know, worth it if you're gonna do multiple oil changes to spend 50 bucks on this and save yourself a good bit of time and uh, work, work, you know, pressing those calipers in. If not, you just use these cheap kind you can get from AutoZone or Riley's or wherever. Um, but this one works way faster and a lot less work, so I got that. All right, there's my stool, my trash can. Here's my jack stands. We're working our way back over to this toolbox. There's my oil jug, my bu my bucket of old rags, which I don't know why I still got. Um, well, because supposedly they're all washable, but I don't know if I'll ever wash them. Here's my creeper, which I hardly ever use, but my wife gave it to me for my birthday, so I, I love it. Uh, here's my lockout kit and some big wire ties. This lockout kit's awesome. Then we come to this toolbox. I keep my key. I keep one key on my keychain, one key up here on the top of the box so it's easy to get to, and another key hidden in case I lose both of the other keys. So here's a drawer of wrenches I use quite often. These are my favorite wrenches, these Duralast ones. They're real nice quality. I know they're no snap-on or anything like that, and some people might fight me over that, but uh, man, I, I really like Duralast stuff. I've never had an issue with their stuff, but when you do, you know, something that it's plastic or it's going to have an issue, but everybody makes the same kind of tool. Like I said, I go there a couple times a day, so... It's real nice to have AutoZone stuff, and when I'm there, I can just go ahead and exchange stuff out. So, got my swivel head, ratcheting wrenches, you know, long reach, crow's foot, whatever these things are called for those nuts on lines, line nuts or whatever. Uh, ratcheting wrenches here. This came from my Craftsman set in a couple of random sizes they didn't give me. I've got an Ace. Here's a pretty much empty drawer with Allen wrenches. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to put in there, and here as well, empty. 
And then here I've got other wrenches that I don't use that often, but are nice to have, like my stubbies. Here's this set, uh, just because I have it mostly, but it's actually my only 11 millimeter wrench. So if I get rid of that set, I'm at least gonna keep that 11 millimeter around. Here's a repeat set of one I already have. These are adjustable, so these will fit three or four different sizes at once. Uh, you know, big adjustable wrenches as well. Then in here I've got my electronics, my headlights and stuff. When I work at night quite a bit, I'll use these headlights. So they're nice and bright. I've got that light up there too that I can take out. And here I've got my spring compressors and all of my standard sockets. So, you know, stuff that are never used anymore. Oh, here's a metric. I just organized these so there's a few things that might be mismatched and I've got to go through it all again. But basically sockets I never ever use in here, but I don't want to throw them away for the, you know, off chance that I do need them. And here's like some 12 points or something like that or eight points, so. Okay, then in here I've got my power tools. I'm gonna try and switch everything over to Milwaukee because I've got, you know, this Milwaukee impact is a lifesaver, especially, you know, mobile stuff because it'll just lay down the power on everything. Uh, uh, this little impact I use a lot, but I want to get the Milwaukee rat, the Milwaukee ratchet and a stubby, you know, quarter inch drive impact like these are, but real handy. I've got a 90 degree angle adapter I use for this that helps a lot until I can get one of those. Um, you know, that cutoff tool I use quite a bit for stuff that's stripped out or spinning and I'm going to replace. So, and that drill that I use every so often. And then down here, I've got my other sockets that I don't use super often, but are nice to have like my half inch, my three eighths, 12 points. Cause sometimes you'll have a uh, nut that's 12 point and you can't just put a six point on a 12 point. You have to have 12 points. So I still have those around some deep, you know, three eighths and then my impact sockets here. That does it for this toolbox. In fact, I think that does it for about everything. I've got vacuum hose there, which I'm gonna relocate and some wire. Like I said, I wanna get a nice wire kit with different gauges and colors of wires. And I wanna actually get hoses as well. I mentioned bolts and nuts, but I wanna get a bunch of different size hose as well because that's one of the other things that'll tend to crack and break while I'm out on a job. And then I've gotta to run to the store, you know, half an hour of my time just to replace a two dollar piece of hose so i want to get different sizes um if you have any questions leave them down below this is pretty much everything there's my jack uh, i want to get a smaller jack too because it's real heavy to pick up and out of the truck but you know things you learn on the job so uh these little trays are good for putting junk in they'll even hold liquid but i usually just use them to keep junk in and over here i've got this tray that'll hold bolts and stuff it's a magnet tray so uh yeah, that pretty much does it. I think we've covered everything. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Any comments? Again, I'll maybe do another tour of just a quick toolbox tour and not the whole truck. But this is the extensive tour of everything. You can see how everything's organized. And uh, I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe and like the video. As always, have a good day and peace out.